Hello, and welcome to the first look at Total War Saga Troy. We're going to be playing through a battle between two of the greatest warriors of the Bronze Age, the furthest back any Total War game has ever gone. Now of course the period is full of myth and legend, but today we will witness this battle play out and write our own history. We are playing as Achilles, the mightiest warrior of the Iliad. But hot-tempered and unpredictable, his army has sailed over to the great city of Troy to steal its riches with only Hector standing in our way. The champion of Troy, Hector, sees an opportunity to take down the enemy of the city and end Achilles' hunt for glory. Seeing that he outnumbers our forces, he has marched out to fight with an army of elite soldiers. We might not be as heavily armoured as Hector, but we can use our mobility and guerrilla tactics to finish Hector and take Troy for ourselves. The new battle features added to Troy will make this possible. The battlefields of ancient Greece were predominantly infantry focused. War horses on the battlefield were scarce and mainly reserved for chariots. We've designed greater distinction between the infantry classes in order to promote greater dynamic interplay. Infantry have three weight classes, light, medium, and heavy. And the differences between them are accentuated from previous Total War titles. We have that full range at our disposal, forming up the anvil we want to hammer Hector's forces against. Greater mass means collisions are more impactful, whereas speed gives flanking a more prominent role to play. Our heavy unit also benefits from having alternate weapon modes. At the press of a button, our renowned Theon Spears can put away their shields and become a much more offensive unit. We will try to use this to our advantage once the battle is underway. One of the advantages of light units is their ability to hide within long grass, a new terrain type within Troy. Long grass enables light units to remain hidden from view, enabling you, the player, to use the map in a greater tactical way than ever. We have chosen to hide our Aginian javelinmen so that they can use their speed plus armor-piercing javelins to flank and destroy some of Hector's greatest warriors. On our right flank, we have our Aginian runners, trained by Achilles himself, also making use of that long grass. They should be especially effective with their special missile weapon available to them. On our left flank, we are going to use our heavy chariots available to us and herd Hector into our trap. Let's get this battle underway. Heavy chariots are slow but tough and can wreak havoc in the enemy lines with their devastating charge punching through all but the toughest and heaviest units. We can see Hector and his troops approaching. Let's take a closer look. They are currently walking through another new terrain type, mud. Mud severely impedes the movement speed of heavier units, who get stuck under the sheer weight of their colossal armors, whereas lighter units can freely move through it with little penalty to their speed. If we had more ranged units in our army, we could utilize this, but today we will have to employ different tactics. Hector doesn't just have these heavily armored Troy guards at his disposal. He also has a Minotaur, a powerful mythical unit in Troy, which can be used to cause massive disarray to enemy troops with his towering height and incredible strength. We think of our Minotaur as a rebel or bandit king who invokes the symbols of the past to stake a claim to power. His army is getting close, leading his archers at the front to loose arrows onto our strongest units. Enter stage one of our ambush. We are going to use the Thessalian Marines to cause disarray on their front line using the Move Whilst Hidden trait. The foe has sighted your hidden units. This enables us to get close to their archers and push them to the rear of Hector's formation, leaving them exposed for a flank. On our retreat, we will take some arrow fire, but this will keep our strongest units at full strength. Our heavy chariots have wrapped around and punched through to completely wipe out the lightweight arch unit. Our right flank is managing to prevent any attacks our enemy Hector had planned, with the light swordsmen holding them in place, and our Aginian runners using their aforementioned missile weapon to provide range support. Hector's forces are now attacking our front line, including the mighty Minotaur. Your hero is under attack. Achilles has engaged with their unit, 
Let's put away the shields of our Thean spears and engage on the offensive. Our units are not as strong as Hector's, so they will not hold forever here. We have our javelinmen still hiding in the long grass. Let's move them into the perfect flanking position before our forces flee. We can see these guards of Troy are making mincemeat of our medium-weight swordsmen. They have only lost around 20 men compared to our almost half. Now let's see what happens with a bit of backstabbing. With their backs exposed, these tanky units stand no chance and we can see their unit numbers dwindle. Troy battles can be won and lost in the skirmish. In Troy, some heroes can issue divine challenges on each other. This will issue a challenge on the enemy hero, which will force them into combat with one another. We've decided to draw Hector into combat and end this battle the honourable way.